sitting here in such gratitude about our new sponsor, Provado Eyewear. Go to provadoeyewear.com and just check out some of the glasses. I mean, I, I'm so happy and pleased and thankful and grateful that Laura, she's the one who created the company. She's in complete alignment with us because she also is about love, light, and levity and adding that to the world. Still standing up with Craig Shoemaker. Thank you, Laura, for being our sponsor. And you all go get yourself some eyewear and you can look good too. I look all right, don't I? Oh, we're live. Look at that. Susan, I don't know if you remember the clip. Every time I hear the word live, I think of Bill O'Reilly years ago when he snapped out, I will do it live. Remember that? Do you remember that by any chance? He was, he, I he, he was so he, he was so he was so intense. He acted like, you know, he's curing the world of its ills. And, and, and he's like, well, well, you know, he's like, we'll do it live. All right. Yeah, he's yelling at the camera people. That's what I'm going to be right now, yelling at these guys. We finally, I'm on the information super cul-de-sac. I'm not very good with technology, Susan, but my staff, they're worse than I am apparently because we're 15 minutes we're past where we should be. Hey, Susan, I am so happy I'm to see, I'm so happy to talk to you because I really am fascinated with astrology, but not in a way where I'm fascinated by I have a propensity to do astrology, but I want it explained to me because I'm getting turned down on dates because of my sign. I'm I'm afraid to tell them. <laughs> my sign. Well, what what is your sign? Tell me, is it Scorpio, Leo? What what is it? Yeah, it's a Scorpio. Yes, you're the first one that's ever guessed. It I love first Scorpio. Guess. My husband was Scorpio. Uh, my father, my grandmother. I love well, apparently, Scorpio. apparently, uh, you and I should have met years ago because it's, it's no, it, absolutely the, the whole Scorpio <laughs> thing. So I, I just want to introduce Susan uh, to our audience here. Uh, Susan is one of the top astrologers, astrologyzone.com. That's a nice website you have there. I, I would go there. Thank you. I'm, I'm redoing it. We're upgrading it. But you're going to convince me today. Tear it apart. You're going to convince We're having me. a website. Today, it's today, like having a boat. today, I'm the perfect person to interview you because I have a little bit of healthy skepticism, not just skepticism, but healthy yeah. skepticism. And, cu good. and curiosity. I have a real curiosity about this. My experience with astrology is not a good track record. Okay. So, Aww. It's a, I, I'll t so, but you are the experts. So this is fantastic. You're the perfect guest. I also want to talk to you <laughs> in a little bit about your personal life, about how you had some turnarounds. That's what our show is about. It's called Still Standing Up with Craig Schumacher. Yeah, great. And you've had an experience you're going to share with us. So first, I want to talk about the astrology. First of all, how long have you been doing this? I mean, I'm sure your whole life, but professionally, how long have you been well, this master at this craft? I started writing in 1997 when a magazine came to me and asked me for a column. But it wasn't until 1995 that Time Incorporated came to me and said, would you like to be part of our website and the new internet that's just starting now? <laughs> and I said, absolutely. Now, I was an agent for commercial photographers. I had a job. I didn't need a new job, but uh, I did it at night. And um, I, they wanted something short for women every day. I said, women, men want to know what's coming up too, don't they? Yeah, we want to know what's you coming know, up from the women. That's what we want to know. <laughs> what's, in <laughs> right. store, what's in store for us? And, because obviously we have different yeah. languages we speak anyway. You know, men are from Mars, women are from yeah. Vegas or whatever that is. We, we have to well, uh, they wanted learn more. Something short. But I said, I want to change the world, and I can't change the world at 50 words per sign. I need it to be long. Yeah. Astrology Zone is, is long. I just had an eye infection that made me blind for two months. Wow. And I luckily had written long summaries. So I posted that, and, and then I said, I'll be on Discord for three hours, I will answer all your questions. I did it twice this month, and now I'm doing them regularly. But I, I wanted to make up for the fact that I couldn't write my normal 40,000 words a month divided by 12 signs, of mm. course. But I'm very detailed. Well, that's good that you're detailed. And I've been doing it. I'm going to be... 28 years on the net now. Oh, people crave people crave details, and they also 
I think there's such a thirst out there for kind of answers for people and uh, kind of lead them down the path, which I, I guess that's part of what you do is you become an inspiration for them, a juice, if you will. Well, I hope. I think astrology is the perfect tool for creative brainstorming, no matter what you're facing. And, uh, you know, often when we face a crisis, we have a knee-jerk reaction. For example, you lose your job. Your friends say, oh, you better cut back. Don't spend any money. Well, maybe you should. Maybe you should buy a fabulous interview outfit, you know, something that makes you feel like a million dollars. Sometimes you have to do things that are counterintuitive that help you but i can see all the different ideas that are in the chart and you pick the one that fits you interesting that's what i like about astrology you're not told what to do you have options and there's no predestination involved Mm -hmm. for example if you have great love aspects you must leave the house (laughs) (laughs) That's a free, or nothing will happen. <laughs> so you have to make an effort. <laughs> now, well, you know, there's a lot of a lot of self love out there, so <laughs> I think that's why they stay oh, in the funny. house. I know it's, everything starts with the word self lately. It's a little I, upsetting, right? <laughs> exactly. How about self obsessed? And uh, <laughs> there's there's a little too much of that going on where people. They're, they're very self-obsessed, and that's what I wanted to talk about. I don't want to just be you know, glad-handing, and this is great. I want to kind of blow back on some things with with uh, mm-hmm. astrology. With the, mm-hmm. It seems to be – I'll give you an example. I was like to share experiences. So you talk about a turnaround. I've had a turnaround in my life where I got suddenly divorced. You know, my, my, my wife kind of got involved with like a cult leader, and it's out of the marriage, and it, was, it really – like some just some tough stuff. So – it, Did you have children? Yeah, we have children together. You have 50-50 custody and all that kind of stuff. But it's just it was very unexpected. And then my friend says to me, well, your birth signs aren't compatible. That's what she says. And I, I said, well, I didn't I didn't realize that. You should have told me that 17 years ago we were together. So, I mean, it seemed to work for years. But uh, that's what I'm saying is that so we weren't compatible or we were compatible. We, no, you know, I, I mean, where, I where do other factors co- is compatible. Co- what, other factors are involved. Yes. And you have eight planets plus the sun and moon. So does everyone else. Mm-hmm. Did you know that there will never be another Craig ever? Not in time, space or geography. Never. Your chart is unique to you because of the unusual uh, cycles of the planets. For example, the moon moves every two and a half days. Pluto moves to a new sign every 248 years. Ah. And Neptune every 14 years. Uh, Uranus every seven. Um, Saturn every two and a half to three years. Uh, Jupiter every year. So there's such different cycles. No one will have your chart. And because astrology is so mathematical, even twins don't have the same chart yeah. because the math is slightly it, it, different. It, well, they're, they're born just slightly apart in, in time. And, and, yeah. and I know time has no, something to do with the day and yeah. things like that. I've, I've yeah, actually I've had so many things – but I've had so many things you happen really, in, my, in my life, though, that I, I've, li- I've already lived 248 years. So I'm, I'm past that. <laughs> So many things. So many things. We all feel that way. Well, sometimes. Now, I feel very young. No matter how many years I have on me, I do feel very young. Always will. Me too. But this this thing yeah. has this thing has come up against me though. The astrology, and, and that's why I'm so fascinated to have uh-huh. you on. It's uh, so I, when I got uh, separated, I immediately asked a friend of mine out, right? And I said, yeah, somebody a friend. You know, she's on a spiritual quest. And she's pretty and all that kind of stuff. And I dated her. 28 years ago. So listen to this, Susan. We were dating and things were going well. She goes, you know, I have to have your chart done. And I said, really? And she she asked me my birth time and everything else. She goes, see if we're compatible. And meanwhile, we are compatible. You know, love making, everything's good. You already established that. Exactly. But listen what happened. The chart came back. She goes, my astrologist said that we need to be apart. We can't be together. You're water and I'm fire. You'll put me out. I said, I thought you were earth. We could make mud. Hey, hey. So, but it, she broke you know up what? with me. So listen what happened, Susan. You won't believe this. I asked her out again. I'm sorry. I asked her out this time, 28 years later. And she says, what is your sign, what is your sign again? When were you born again? I go, hey. And I was like te- teasing her. I'm going, I'm having fun. I go, hey, I have PTSD from the last time you broke up with me. I, was, I, I can't get it. And she goes, 
you're gaslighting me now. You're a liar. How come you won't tell me? And I said, I'm not telling you because of what happened. So girl, she, she blocked me. <laughs> so whatever. This girl needs therapy, you know, a good therapist <laughs> to help her. I, first of all, I had a best, I have a best friend. Her name is Anna. And when she got divorced, she would come over and I'm writing astrology zone until two in the morning and she missed her train to Connecticut. So I have a beautiful guest room. She says, I'm bothering you. Oh, no, 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 you're not. I'm so happy to see you. So I'm typing, and I think she's doing her email, and she is. But then she says, do you think he's cute? I'm like, what? What What are you doing? She said, I'm on match. I said, oh, I haven't seen that in years. Let me see. Yes, he's very nice looking. Do his chart. I said, no. No, 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 no. I will never know everything about a person in just one hour or two hours. Go out with him. Be generous and open, accepting. Now, if every time he says, let's have dinner, he takes you to a food truck instead of a nice restaurant, <laughs> you're allowed to ask me, is he a little stingy? <laughs> 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 or does he just love gourmet food? You know. <laughs> but you ask one question. You can't ever know a person What's just the, like that. What is that and, question? And you can't just take the sun signs or the rising signs. You can't. What is that question you ask? You see, there's an essential well, question they should ask. No, there's any question. Uh -huh. Is he too involved with his mother? Is <laughs> is he a little stingy? Um, does he want to live in the suburbs? I like the city. You know, questions like that. You're right. You know, specific questions. But I can't tell anybody someone else's whole life. That's what I don't like about some of the apps that are out there that give you. It's almost the equivalent of an eight-inch book. And you, too, can do brain surgery. No, 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 no. I'm accredited. I studied 12 years. I didn't ask for money for a chart for 20 years. Very careful. My mom uh, comes from, my grandmother from Germany. Very accurate. The other half of me is Italian. Passionate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but always instilled that you have to be careful what you say because someone's going to walk around with that information and AI is making tons of mistakes and some astrologers are just relying on AI to give predictions yeah. and that's even worse. So that worries me a lot. Can you, actually, can, can you clarify, AI. can you clarify what you mean by predictions? What, what, what is that about? Oh, okay. Sure. Imagine the planets at a cocktail party. Mm -hmm. There are eight of them. They're waiting for the sun and moon to come there. You know, a new moon will come with her partner or the full moon. She, they're, they're circulating in different parts of the room. When a planet gets within orb of eight degrees, they begin communicating. And what it means is, is related to the house and sign that they're in. That's why it takes so long to learn it. You have to build synapse in your brain. What are they communicating? And uh, if it's a lovely aspect like Jupiter conjunct Mercury, it's a wonderful day to sign a contract, take a trip, go shopping, get something beautiful, hand in a manuscript, because these are things that Mercury rules. And Jupiter is the giver of gifts in life. He's Santa Claus. His only job is to make you happy. So, you know, it's almost like they have to move into position and they start communicating. We know they are by the ephemeris. Ephemeris shows the position of the planets. NASA even publishes one. It's the same one that all of us use. It just depends on the font you like, to tell you the truth. And, you know, we look at them, and um, it's predictions are really more like opportunities because you do have to show the universe your intent. Right. I want a new job. I could say to you, you are under f fabulous real estate aspects, but if you don't want to move, <laughs> you don't have to know for right now. Right. Scorpio has beautiful marriage aspects. But if you say, well, I don't want to marry anybody between now and May when this trend ends, you can use it for any collaboration in business. 
like with an agent or a publicist or a, um, a business partner or a social media director who's going to work directly with you in a confidential one-on-one -on -one way. Um, next year, you're going to make a pile of money. It's going to be one of your biggest financial years that you've seen in six years. This is really big. You talking to and me? Are you, are you talking to me now? Are you talking about me personally? What's that? You talking about me personally? You personally. Oh. Well, you, all well. Scorpios. We all love to hear mm -hmm. that. So predictions sometimes are uh, something I would call inspirations. You're inspiring someone yeah. maybe to get out of their rut, maybe get out of certain thinking, and your prediction causes them to shift. Am I correct in assuming this? They yes, shift and into this new consciousness with intention to get them started thinking in a new way. Yeah. Now, I, one thing I've noticed with society is a a, a need to control. Uh, I think that this is a difficulty mm -hmm. for people, which is why I do a whole thing about laughter, laughter healing, is because laughter you're completely out of control and you're in your own, you're in, you're in your body, right? I mean, and by the way, do you lean into laughter, the the fun aspects? Because I always say women the want more to the better. Humor. The more the, the more, better. The better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What do you think? What does laughter do to you in your in your life and your work? I'm sorry, you went in and out for a second. Say that again. Uh, sorry, please. I said, what does laughter do to you in your life, your personal life, and your work and your career? Oh, what does laughter? Everything. What does laughter do for you? It uh, it breaks the ice. Uh, in September of 2009, I lost lost 65 percent of my eyesight, or maybe even 75 percent. And I'm sitting in the doctor's office. It's a, I was given the name of the best specialist in the city, and it's a consortium of 13 doctors that work on different parts of the eye. And I was told I have a very serious condition that I inherited. And I'm sitting there crying because I can't see anything. All of a sudden, something happened. And he said, uh, water is washing away your photocells. You need to have injections in your eyes once a month. Oof. A needle in the white of your eye. And I'm thinking, uh -huh, I don't know if I can do this. And I'm crying and oh. I'm crying. I said, Susan, if you don't do this, you will never write another word. And you will never see your children's faces Ooh. again. Ooh. And when he said that, I started to laugh. <laughs> and I said, you really know how to win an argument. <laughs> And All then, right, so you win. I'll so do it. <laughs> let, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. They're proposing they're going to put a needle. Like there's an old expression. I'd rather put poke put needles in my eyes. They literally were saying we're going to put a needle in your eye. That's the only way you can cure this. That's crazy. It's medicine. It's medicine. And I've been doing it for 14 years every four weeks. Does the eye have muscles or feeling in the eye? I wouldn't know. I've never yeah. I've never had oh. any poke. You know what bothers you? Not the thin little needle oh. that's as thin as a hair. Wow. It's the Clorox. <laughs> it's it's betadine, which is a part of iodine. But that's what drives you nuts. It feels like Clorox mm. mixed with lemon juice. And you're hanging from the chandelier for a few hours. So it really is a time suck. But it's really sad because this is the only vacation I get once a month. I don't write wow. <laughs> one day. But, no, you, I got used to it. You get used to anything. Sure, right? you, absolutely. Anything. Do, you, do you listen to funny podcasts and comedians and things in your headphones well, while you're in this recovery process? Yours. I don't know any. I don't know any funny podcasts. Oh, you'll have to send me a list. Oh, yeah. I would definitely Absolutely. love to well, do we that. Have, we have fun with this one, too. I was getting to something that has to do with creativity and comedy and laughter. I don't think we focus on it enough. I think we do focus on fear and control. So many things. People even yeah. tell people even tell you how you should interview. They'll, they'll say you should, you should do this or you should cover this. You know, people are so much in control as opposed to just listening and being present and into whatever vibe happens and takes place and unfolds naturally. There's such a need to control. And that's what the question I have to you about astrology. There's, I think sometimes people have this feeling inside of them. I must know the answer to this. I'm sure you've run across oh, people like that. No, I encourage the person to come to the answer yeah. through clues I'm going to give them. There's another thing besides control that's happening in society, I feel. When did 
society becomes so judgmental. Yeah. I think social media did that. You know that cartoon, a little dog typing, and on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. you know, I... I'm not judgmental. Yeah, Didn't I can the tell Bible you're not. say, yeah. "Do not judge, lest you be judged." <laughs> well, that, that, not, not many people remember that. You know? <laughs> people choose their Bible verses as fits them, and usually, sometimes it's it fits their anger, resentments, and things like that. And as a matter of oh, fact, they have a whole yeah. they have something in the Bible: a merry heart, heart doeth good. So we, a merry heart is very important, I think, to a great healing. I own an organization called Laughter Heals. I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I can tell you do. I, do. You, I will do your reading right now. <laughs> I do readings as myself, but not through astrology. It's through energy. And my energy on you is you really do have a beautiful essence about you. You have a real natural... Oh. I teach, I, teach, I teach something called genuine energy flow, and you have an a absolute... I've never met you before. I don't know much about you, but you have a natural, genuine energy flow. There's nothing phony. And I must say, that the, 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 uh, to plus the compliment, I'm not an astrology guy. I'm having, I'm, I have you on here for my own curiosity and my own experiences, which have not been good, by the way, as I've mentioned to you before. Well, most astrologers don't believe in astrology before they study it. I didn't. Oh, really? I didn't. Oh, wow. That's yeah. fascinating. That's great. You're not born a believer. <laughs> I, some people are. It seems I have a friend who's just, I'll say who I'm dating. And she goes, no, it's not going to work. And, you know, and I, I just think that it takes a lot of fate out of it. If you get into things like that, you know, like is what what's like. Yeah, but that's really depressing. Then you won't try as hard. And maybe that person's perfect for you. It, not even a best friend is going to have all the qualities you need in a best friend, let alone a made you know you need several friends and you need to give a little on the things that your mate can't give you that they just don't have and you just accept it yeah and maybe you can fill it in you know it's just i, I, I don't just, know i just think that there's i was talking about this earlier there's, there's no utopian myopia people are so dialed into <laughs> you know what i mean there's just you're not going to be happy in this linear That's thinking in, in these in these boxes yeah. that we live in it's just even even shows like this or whatever it is, an interview show. Well, here's what you should ask or here's what you should do. You know, you know, people are so into control now as opposed to yes. letting go. And I think, Susan, you would agree with me. Surrender is the best victory. Surrender. Yes, because is. then you're more open exactly. to see. Yeah. You know, once in a while, you know, I have a company and I hire different people. And it may have occurred to me, maybe she's not the right one to work here, you know. But I bite my tongue. This will give her a chance. Mm -hmm. She had other qualities that I didn't even know I needed, like she's super high tech, but maybe terrible with spelling, but we can fix that. Right, right. I've always found that with everybody who I've hired, there's usually something else they're bringing that I never expected exactly. and that I treasure. Exactly. But you have to yeah. just take a deep breath and wait for the flower to unfold. Unfold, you know? unfold naturally. Yes, this is what I like about you. Yeah. You, yeah, that's, you, you, you bring that essence and that light, which is what you bring, and then, and then allow for the results to not be manipulated, but to allow them to take place. And that's where I've had yes. a problem with astrology because it's so defined and you're in a box and you're a Scorpio. That means well, you're, that means you're, you're meeting people who may not be accredited, who may not have studied long enough. Um, you know, there's different levels. You know, um, my mother was very careful. I remember telling her when I came out with my first book with Warner Books, I said, Mom, a prisoner wrote to Warner Books and to get it to me. He wanted some advice. And she said, I hope you were optimistic and and caring of that person because that he the word she used, that poor devil needs hope too. Mm. And I loved her for that. I just I am so much like her, but it's because I love her so much. I don't have her anymore, but I was so close to her yeah. because um I was very sick as a child. I had something else. <laughs> Believe me, health has run my life, you know, because I, I've i had different things happen. And I had no fault of my own. It just 
happens sometimes, you know. Well, I, I would invite I would invite you to uh, to have a different perspective on that as well. We'll have a little reversal here. <laughs> so, I I'm, okay. I have an organization called Laughter Heals, and if you put laughter at the top of your list and let everything happen from that point, watch the kind of health laughter is the best medicine. Watch what happens once that becomes your intention. You talked about intentions earlier. So maybe that can be the intention. I'm going to get well through I laughter. Love that. Yeah, yeah. So I love it. We're all here, we're all here to help one another. Right? Yeah, I know you do. You have I a great sense of humor. That's the funny thing is like maybe part of this conversation is meant to be for that. I'm going to, when we're off off here, I'll call you and I'll give you some suggestions on where to find your medicine. It's a pharmacy that we have inside of it. You're all the way in California, but I go there because my daughter lives there and I have to have dinner with you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I want to get to know you. Absolutely. I, feel, I feel the same way. I have one little concern about you, though, I must express. Okay. Uh, I've t two times during this interview, I heard of police sirens. So I'm a little worried about where you're living. <laughs> I live in Manhattan. Oh, I can tell. I don't me. even hear it. I, I'm on the 29th floor, and I don't even hear it anymore. I, I, I used to live there. You become numb to it. And here I'm listening to you, yeah. and you're talking, and you have no idea what's going on. And I keep going, oh, my God, another oh, siren. the police are coming. They, We're figuring it out. Here they, come, here they come again. So They're coming to take me away. Away. They're taking me away. Oh, remember that? They're coming to take me away. Hoo, hoo, ha, ha. To the funny farm. Remember that song? To, to the funny farm. Exactly right. It does seem yeah. that way. It yes. does seem like they're coming to take us away. Hey, it's Craig Shoemaker. I wanted to give you a special offer. I don't like saying it like that, but I will because it's actually called Special Offers on my website. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I've been in the coaching business for a little while. Now, we have something called Winning with Laughter. We have Winning with Humor. Now, we have Winning with Laughter. I'll teach you how to win in life with laughter. Now it's available in a special offer. You don't have to be part of the course. You can join now. You're already too late on the other one. Now you can have this. Go to special offers on the website, craigshoemaker.com, and you're going to learn how to win with laughter. And even you can be funnier. I can teach you. There's so much of uh, discourse and dis-ease that's out there now, and mm -hmm. I, I think that you and I and people like oh, us. Oh, more than ever. Yeah. If more we, than ever. If we get into that flow and out of control and out of manipulation, out of trying to come up with your own results that you want, I think sometimes in astrology, again, blowing back on this, sometimes people want to hear something. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Have you found that to be the case where they're coming to you and going, please tell me this because this is the – this is what I want to be the result. Well, like someone else said to me, please tell me I'm not going to be alone for the rest of my life. <laughs> Am I going to find someone? Of course you are. In astrology, you get different points where you have opportunity, where you should circulate, where you should ask a friend to make an introduction, uh, join a club, do different things, vary your path. Don't do the same thing over and over and over. You have to put yourself in different types of situations but uh, there are other times where I'll say, well, love isn't the main course this year. You have a few sparkling spots, and I can tell you which months they're in and kind of the week that they're likely to occur. But I want you to concentrate on your career because other clients I have would give their IT to have what you have, you know, wow. and make use of this because this trend isn't coming back for many years. This really sparkles and you'll get so much headway and you'll make money and then you'll be able to travel and do things that you can't do now. Right. You know, it'll yeah. give you options. And meet somebody, and maybe maybe too. you'll meet somebody across the world, somebody that more resonates yeah, with you. Yeah, or maybe someone sitting next to you yeah. on the airplane. On the airplane, exactly. You, know? you just you, you never know. Or you rent a you rent a house in Lake Tahoe or the Hamptons. Have you ever? Have you ever some girlfriends, some boyfriends? <laughs> have, you, have you ever turned to someone and go, you know, you're you're right. You got no shot. <laughs> you're not going to be anybody. Sorry. Well, I I once had a lady raise her hand. She said, "I've had 12 years of terrible luck," and I don't remember saying this, but my daughter reminded me. She said, "Mommy, you said." If you've had 12 years of no luck at all, it's not in your stars, it's in you. <laughs> I said, did I really say that? Oh, my God. Hey, <laughs> she I, said, yeah, I said, there's nothing that lasts that long. I that agree with you. I, I, I agree with you, though, because, because if you break that down, they're stating the intention and negative intention. So it's always going to manifest yeah. itself like 
Energy follows yeah. thought. And if you have those thoughts, if you put laughter, joy, happiness, bliss at the top of your thoughts, that is exactly what will take place in your life. If you th if you talk about if you come from a negative do you agree with this? Because you if they, expect it. If they yeah. come to you with a negative question of what they don't want, I'm finding that in the dating world. I'm new to the dating world. I'm getting, here's what I don't want. It's very controlling. It's, here's, I don't want this and I don't want that. Well, you're, you're, you're not setting it up for, for success because you're already saying, well, also, you're, telling, you're, you're telling the universe, this is going to happen because this is what I don't, don't, don't. And so what do I do, do, do? Well, a love relationship isn't, isn't like buying a car and parking it out front, you know? <laughs> You have to be willing to give as right. well as to right. get. A lot of men say to me, well, first of all, our roles are changing. And I I feel a little sorry for men because they don't know how to react to women Thank anymore. Thank you. We're That's exactly right. Kind of a mystery <laughs> at this point. But some women, they say on a first date, do you want children? Do you want to get married? I mean, it's just too much, right. too fast. Right. It's not normal. And, and, and I tell and, women freeze your eggs. And, that gives yeah. you more time. And the gavel, you know? the gavel's out all the time. The judge and jury, <laughs> overrule. Yeah. <laughs> then you're this. You're, well, you're and some label think... comes out as opposed to let's get into uh, a flow where you know you and I have a flow now. You know we get to, we got to know each other over the last you know twenty minutes or so, and it's an easy flow. There's no questions with an agenda with control. It's just, it has a yeah. flow to it and it takes place. And there are too many people, I think, that are coming from this place of it has to be this way. And it's an angry space that we're coming from as opposed to an open space yeah. for a man and a woman are different. Or maybe a Scorpio and a Leo, you know, need to find that common ground or whatever it is. I was told well, not to be with I Leos, said, by the uh, way. <laughs> my daughter is a little Pisces and she married a man named Leo. Can you imagine? I have a son-in-law named Leo and I'm an astrologer. <laughs> His last name is Fitzpatrick. So she's Pisces, he's Leo, he's fire, she's water. So I thought, but they get along so well. And I learned from Vedic astrologers, the people in India, that when you're born in the evening, at night after the sun goes down, the moon takes on special importance. Now, Chrissy has the moon in Aquarius, which gets along perfectly with Leo, and she has Venus there and Mercury. So I started looking at other people's charts, and the moon is more important than the sun if they're born at night. And that could be 10 minutes after the sun goes down, or three minutes. She's born at 7.39 in February when the sun goes down early. Mm -hmm. And she and Leo are made for each other. They are so perfect together, so happy. They're married five years now. Mm -hmm. and they have a little boy, um, little Otis. And, oh, um, I, thought, I thought his name was delicious. I thought, as long as they didn't name the boy Sagittarius. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, Saggy, get in here. Do your, do your chores, Sag. <laughs> <laughs> So, I agree. And and they didn't name him the name of a retail store, a state, a country. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> right. oh yeah, a real God. name. <laughs> I know. The names, the names we're giving people. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna if I ever oh. have kids again, I'm gonna name them things that I want them to be. I say, hey, 401k, get over here. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, bill billionaire, billionaire, come out, come over here. Take care of your dad. Well, Trump did that with Barron. I want to tell oh, Dave Barron. You know, I you guess. were afraid that the other kids would tease him a little too I, much. Well, yeah, I guess you it, know? that's true. When I grew up, yeah, you got teased on your name for sure. It, totally. I, my name is yeah. Shoemaker. They really tortured me with the Shoemaker name. <laughs> hey, do you make shoes? Hey, sneaker maker. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got, <laughs> I got ripped on. And I, I, so I used to tell jokes to kind of like, you know, uh, ease the pain, ah, ease the pain. Them. Exactly. I deflect. Yeah. I've been doing that my whole life. Like I said, Hey, did you guys hear about my shoe? It's like fourth grade. My shoe <laughs> fact, my shoe factory burnt down. Some big heel started it. A lot of, a lot of souls were lost. Come on. These are the jokes, folks. <laughs> you got to turn, turn it around. That's what life is about. A series of turnarounds. And I know you've had quite a few in your life. Of uh, turnarounds. Yeah, that have happened. Pivots. I was born with a birth defect that the doctors didn't know what was wrong. And in those days, and still today, if they don't know what's wrong with you, they say it's your fault. 
Maybe you should see a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with you. Only because the machines couldn't pick up what it was. I would get an attack usually once a year for eight weeks, and I couldn't move an inch in the bed. The doctors would say, you don't want to go to school. You've convinced your parents that you have some mystery illness. Well, when I was 14, they operated on me, and they found out that I was bleeding at a horrific rate internally, that my mm. veins and arteries were made out of tissue paper. And just being excited for my birthday or the Easter Bunny or Christmas, they would break open because I usually would get sick around a holiday. And, and my mother was like, what kind of illness only strikes at holidays? But I would be in bed so long. So she said, when you're 14, this will go away. But I said, no, mama, I don't think so. And she said, and I remember her big blue eyes looking sad. She said, the good goes away, but the bad goes away too, Susan. Mm -hmm. This will go. And my father had been collecting names of doctors. He had an Italian specialty grocery store. They used to like to come in for the mortadella, the mozzarella, the prosciutto, you know, the beautiful sandwiches, you know. You say, hey, I need the name of a good doctor. And they would... And he was amassing these names, and one name kept showing up. And uh, so we went to him, and I had to go by ambulance because I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. My mother would change the sheets with me in the bed, like they do in the hospital, very gingerly. And he operated, and I was in the hospital 11 months straight. I was really sick. They had to do multiple surgeries. Then I only had eight transfusions, but in my life I've had 40 and they finally got it under control. They found out later that my thigh bone was like a chicken bone. It had no marrow. So I broke the thigh bone four times, just walking across my rug in my house. I mean, it, it was just so brittle. So they put steel in, but then I couldn't leave my house for a year because the doctor said, we can never go in that leg again. You're going to bleed to death. So... You have to stay home for one year and wait for the bone to grow around this steel. And I did. I did. The first night I went out, I'll never forget, I had uh, three girlfriends that were in from California. They said, let's go to the Rainbow Room, when the Rainbow Room was still beautiful down in Rockefeller Center. They've kind of ruined it now, but mm. it was still beautiful. And we had some hors d'oeuvres and little nibbles and drinks. And then the one girl said, I'm going to go get the coats. You stay here. You know, the two girls left. And I looked out the window, and I just started to cry. And the other girl said, are you in pain? What's wrong? I said, no, nothing's wrong. I just never thought I'd see anything this beautiful again. Mm -hmm. And this is my first time out. And all the lights up there, you know, you see Manhattan all laid out like a million stars. Yeah. It just was gorgeous. And uh, no, I was happy, but I, I just burst into tears. It was so beautiful. That, that those tears are you really good. appreciate things when you yeah. <laughs> after you get well. The, that's, those those tears yeah. are an acknowledgement of of wholeness and acknowledgement of of the light that's inside of all of us. That light exists mm -hmm. in all of us. It's this potential, this potentiality that wishes to express itself. It always wishes to, and then we get in these Did obstacles. You, yes, what? you've put your finger on something. When you look at the sun in an in astrological chart, right. and you can do it on my website on astrologyzone.com. It's free, homepage, do your birth chart. As long as you know your time of birth, you'll get something really accurate. Well, the sun, when you look at it, has a little dot in the middle. And I was studying all the glyphs. What, what do they mean? Because they all had meaning. And I found out that the ancients put the dot in the middle it is a piece of the divine that we're all given. We're given a piece of God that we can develop. Right. And it exists in all That's of us. That's a wonderful thought. That exists in all of us, that light. Yes. And it wishes to Everybody shine. Everybody gets it. But I think these outside forces darken that and diminish that and take it away, and the fear comes in, and the doubt and the worries, and—, and, and the affirmations of bad health, as opposed to affirming that we are well, we are whole, we are healthy, we are happy, we are wise. All of those things, if we say those things, 
people think that positive affirmations are just some, you know, hyperbole or something well, Pollyanna. I, it's it absolutely has been proven to to work. I love my little housekeeper. She's been with me 20 years. She comes once a week. Her name is Rosita and she comes from Haiti. And I was just blind. I just came out of it. This is the first time I can see. And she, she always would say, God is good. God is good. You will get it back. Yeah. And I love that about her. And it's true. You just have to have faith. You have to pray. Right. And, you know, and other people were praying for me, too. And I do believe in prayer very much. It's an, en it's and, an, it's an um, energy, too. That's a positive energy. Have you ever done your own chart on yourself? Have you ever? Uh, of, course. <laughs> yeah. of course. A lot of times, like therapists, they don't really work on themselves. But uh, so, you know what I mean? Like they're the ones that need it the most, but then they deflect and they go, oh, I'm not going to look at myself. Well, that's why they go into therapy. Yeah, exactly. The exactly. I don't want to look at myself. Yeah. I'm going to look at other people. So uh, what have you found in your own charts, if you would share that with us? What have you found that has maybe well, ma that, um, made a I shift for you? Shift. Yeah, I see the best in everyone. Right, but that has gotten me in trouble sometimes because yeah. people have taken advantage of because, me. Yeah, you so dive now in. I surround myself so with people who can protect me. Yeah, you know who. Uh, I I I I just spoke to a, a young woman whose boyfriend disappeared. They were dating three and a half years, and he just vanished. Mm. And then they found his car 20 miles away, completely burned, like as if the flames burned up. So now they're looking for a body. And I was looking at her chart, and she has the moon conjunct Neptune. I don't have that, but I have Neptune in the house of love, so I tend to put people on pedestals. But with her, it's very strong that she believes the best in everyone. And I said, I do too. But you have to listen to your friends. If they're saying, I don't know about this one. I think he has a double life. There's something going on with him. You know, um, start listening to your friends and family if they're not so sure about someone. If you have, it, you start to see patterns in your life. And she married a man and got divorced who put a gun to her head once. So here she's got two boyfriends who seem involved with very bad people. Mm. So I have to, I even tried to get her therapy. I said, you know, you need someone to support you, someone to talk to you. I said, oh, I have plenty of people. Oh, all my friends. Well, that isn't what I meant, but I, we didn't know each other yet. Maybe next time I talk to her, I'll say, you know, a therapist might make you feel better. You know, just if your insurance covers it, you know, I know it's an expense. But, uh, you know, and I even think she should move because I think some bad people were watching her house from what she was telling me. And telling someone to move is a big deal. That's hard. Yeah. And she has two children, but that's particularly why I wanted her to move. It's, it's funny you should, see the word, you should say the word telling. Um, I would imagine it would be better for people if it was a suggestion. As opposed to oh, that's telling, what I mean. Because we have such a oh, I do. Exact, I'm very I know that, soft. that is what you do too, <laughs> because you're you're inspiring yeah. people by offering these. There, they're, sometimes they're blind spots, and you're you're adding a light. And we all have them. Exactly. So we that's what I think people like you do. Somewhere. Yeah. And they they keep tripping us up, but it, that's the good thing about getting older. You start to see patterns. Um, but uh, you. We all need each other. If anything about my illnesses have taught me anything, is you have to rely on other people. Sure. When my eyes went blind, both of them, I couldn't see anything. Um, my editor said, Susie, I'm going to read you menus of great restaurants in New York. So you'll pick one that, that you could go to when you get well. And he was, we spent like an hour and he's reading me Danielle's and like Ron Wee and you know, Bernadette. And it, it, I felt like I had dinner after we got to, We had so much fun. We were laughing and like, yeah. what would you order? What would you order? You know, and uh, as I began to see, I love to cook, love, love, love it. So each team member took turns you know, my head of digital read me my recipe. I said, wait, you're going too fast. I'm still chopping the garlic. She said, Susan, we're all afraid you're going to burn your kitchen down. You can't see. I said, I can see shapes. I can. I can see enough. Yeah. 
And, and, oh my and, God, and, I'm going to say a prayer. <laughs> and, and, and cooking's a feel anyway. It's a real feel. Uh, oh, it's very so tactile. Much yeah, so. absolutely. I, I, I want to love, love cooking. <laughs> I want to ask you a burning question now that I have an astrology expert on here. The planets, they took away a planet. Uh, probably 10 no, years ago. Was it 10 years ago? Pluto? Yeah, didn't they take it away? It's not a planet. They, they had to it's... bring them back. All the mothers were sending hate mail to um... ah! <laughs> <laughs> We all love Pluto. And Pluto <laughs> is a dwarf planet, but he's still a planet. Well, yeah, but he they may said, be a little guy. They, I think they said that it wasn't, though. They said it was like a, like a, some sort of a, a gas or something like that. And no, no, they changed their mind about it. They they did. They got enough. I never knew that scientists could change their mind based on protests. So they said <laughs> he's a little dwarf planet, but in astrology, he's the little horse that's on the outside rim on the precipice of our solar system. Yeah. So because he moves so slowly, 248 years, he's back to where it was with the American Revolution. Um, he stays in a house a very long time, so he makes his presence known. Right. Slow-moving planets really are powerful, and astrologers weren't going to give up Pluto, even if the planetarium yeah. I had, director. I, 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 had, I had an uncle like that. He just stayed in that house a very long time. Going get up. Back then, we we didn't use the word bum. We used the word bum back then, but uh, not allowed to use that anymore. Nor, by the way, are you allowed to? Use, you're no, also even if it's a planet, can't use the word dwarf, Susan. Just wanted to. Tell you, oh, <laughs> there's so much control no going on out there. It's like saying midget. You can't say that either. You just did. You just <laughs> you did. You could say midja. If you put an A on the end, you go go midja. I mean, if you put A's on the end of things, apparently a dwarfa, a dwarfa, you're good. It's it's amazing to me. We grew up in a time of the identity. You know what our identity was? You're male, female, or a little teapot. Remember, I identify as a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle. Here's my spout. It was simple. I like the simplicity. And now we're, we get, oh, we're getting very too. complex with our anger. It's so much anger that's going on. Misplaced rage. Yeah, but, identifying uh, people. Certain, which is, by the way, one of the problems I have with astrology is once you get that label, like like – can you tell me what the reputation – I've heard this for years. I don't even study astrology. Scorpios, which I'm a Scorpio. Can you tell Scorpios me – Scorpios are what, extremely loyal, discreet, can keep a secret, understand other people's motivation. You can never lie to a, uh, a Scorpio. It rules law and order, that, but also spies because they're the, – Gemini talks too much, but Scorpio is just the opposite. You, you hardly ever know what they're thinking. That's why people are afraid of them. You just have to draw them out a little. You know what? Uh, Hillary and President Biden, Hillary Clinton and Biden, both are Scorpios. And they both get criticized for not being more outward. And, you know, well, they're not like that. They're more private and more um, shy almost. You know, so uh, they shouldn't be criticized for that. They're just look at what they achieve, not not their demeanor, you know. So, um, what's you know, like uh, Donald Trump is Leo rising and is a Gemini, they mm -hmm. like to talk a lot. Um, so you have different um qualities in all the signs, yeah, well, I, but I love Scorpio. The one I was there, the, they still water runs deep. I was leaning on, really I was leaning on the one reputation that we have that you did not cover, which shocks me. It's as soon as people go, oh, they always go, oh, you're a Scorpio. You don't know what it is? Sexual. We're supposed to be very sexual. Oh, well, they're supposed to be very sexy. Uh, sexual. Yes. I don't know about sexy. I don't, you know. Oh, it, they have that gaze. <laughs> that gaze across the room. The, the love. That's, that's right, baby. I'm the love they master. They look at you yeah, and they hypnotize you. I'm the love master, baby. I love across you. Across a crowded yeah, room. Baby. Every woman wants to lock eyes with a, okay. a stranger across a room. Are you kidding? <laughs> that's what we all want. <laughs> well, but then, then they'll say to me, they go, oh, you're, they go, uh, Susan, they do, they literally do this. They go, oh, you're a Scorpio. And they get afraid because you're all about sex. And I said, is that, so here's the problem I have. Is it every Scorpio, like some Amish guy? Oh, I can't get enough sex. I, I did, she was, had a bonnet on. I was doing her in the back of the no. buggy there. I mean, every single person is sexual who's, 
who's scored. Listen, it's not one I'll deny, though. I do like my sex as much as I would think anybody, but apparently I like it more because I'm a Scorpio. Yeah, well, they're more afraid of the revenge factor that is supposed to be associated with Scorpio. But here's what I say about that. The Scorpion doesn't use his sting unless his species is endangered. Oh, I read this. Yeah. And using the poison that he's going to spew actually makes him perish. So he doesn't do it wantonly or without a reason. He does it because he's endangered. His whole species is endangered. Wow. So um, people don't understand that about Scorpio. That's interesting. It is, it is true. If you cross the Scorpio, they're not going to forget it so quickly. It, it's, it's it is so, a fixed sign. It's it's funny you should say yeah. that because I'm I'm dealing with something in my life right now, a pattern. But I'm you know I'm one of these types. I'm optimistic, and I see red flags. I paint them green, and sometimes they're really big red flags, like from Late Miserable. <laughs> She's blowing into a breathalyzer tube to start her car. She might be an alcoholic. The, the tender barricade. I mean, this is like, this is how it is. I see it and I go, oh, get the paint out. She can't be that way. No, get the green paint. And I just go, I go into denial. But here's the thing that's been happening to me lately. And, it, you know, I'll get very personal here. You said something about truth. I am really into truth. My own truth, yes. other people's truth, the truth. And other people who are not into that, it's a big conflict because they know that I know. It's almost like a magician, and I go, hey, the doves are in his sleeve, and they're going, oh, I don't want this person in my audience anymore. So I deal with, like, narcissists especially are threatened. Well, you like, can pick up on, like, that's tied to the motivations of people. Yeah. You can tell when it's dark, where some signs like cancer can't because – they're so nurturing. They're they're all the water signs nurture, but um, Scorpio knows when something's off. They're extremely intuitive. And uh, wow, that I, I once went to, wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm I totally agree with you, and I don't want to do that with astrology. I want to go, yeah, that's me. But that really is me. Extremely intuitive, uh, to the point of psychic. But it's to the point where it, well, it hurts, though, because I have some people that I really, um, you know, uh, family but members. But they also pay attention to the details. For example, when my husband and I were dating, uh, we weren't married yet, of course. Uh, I was at his house waiting for him to come home, and he wasn't coming home. So I decided I'm just going to leave. I'll come. I'll talk to him later. I must have been there an hour, hour and a half. I brushed my hair before I left. And he, he said, why did you leave? I said, how did you know I was even there? He said, there was one long brown hair in the sink. <laughs> one hair, and I knew you were there. <laughs> they look at the details. It's, and that's it, what it, makes them such good detectives and prosecutors. But, it's, but yeah. here's the thing. It's an offense to people that you tell the truth. I have two people that I'm having this problem no. with, and believe it or not, I'm going to tell you when. Be that way. I'm going to tell you when they're when they're born. They're born on the same day, and I'm having difficulties with both of them. That they know I know the truth, they run from the truth, and how they run from the truth is they deflect by attacking me, and that makes me defensive. It's not a good thing. So I mean, they're well, they'll li they'll they'll, are... they'll literally lie. But just hear me out. I want to I want to answer on this. There's they're both born on the same day, not the same day day, but they're both born. You know. And I want to know, first of all, I can't remember their sign. I'm not very good at this. But what can one do suggestion-wise when people are coming at I, the One of them I had a talk with yesterday with a neutral party insisted on deflecting. I go, well, that's your feelings aren't a fact. Tell me a fact of what took place. You know, you're this and you're that. And other people find you this and all this. Is going to, I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. You get lost in the weeds of deflection when I'm going, I'm trying to take some care of something. Turning the conversation. They, they turn, they, and or, that's what they, both of them do that, and they and they lie and they deny. So here's my question. And they're both born on July 25th. And I'm a Scorpio no, no, November 15th. Now, is oh, there yeah? is there is there a conflict? I had another conflict with someone born on no, August you're August first. August first. This is another that's both, Leo as well. All right? of you are fixed. So fix signs, stick to their guns, and when they say they're gonna do something, they do it. Actually, in American history, uh, we tend to vote for 
um, Scorpio, Aquarius, and um, what's the other fix on Leo? The most for president. Now, Trump is not a Leo, but he has Leo rising. Obama had Leo, is a Leo, and um, Mr. Biden is a, a Scorpio. So, you no, know, we want fixed signs because what the candidate promises, they deliver. But they're not super flexible. But with your two friends there, they lie because they don't think what they have to give is enough. Or maybe they're embarrassed by something, shame. some defect. They're, they're, some, shame. they're just trying to make believe it's not there. Exactly. There's right. other people who do bad things and blame it on someone else. That's exactly and it's right. It's the exact thing that they're guilty of. Right. You know, um, but maybe that's psychological and they don't even see it. But oh. but usually when you're trying to deflect or put someone down, it's because you're not feeling good about of you. Of course, of course. Because truth makes is nice. It's clean. I feel. I feel like. I sometimes I feel like Toto from The Wizard of Oz. I just pull that curtain. You know. Uh, I believe. I believe. I believe innocently and with good intentions. But they turn it around and make it bad intentions. I'm a bad guy. Oh and yeah. I'm gonna find other well, people to find me to be a bad guy. What's that? The word codependent doesn't exist. I have a list of words I will never use, and that's one of them. Trying to be helpful to someone. Oh, you're codependent with each other. No, I'm just trying to be helpful. I know. Why do you have to give it a term that's psychological that you haven't studied psychology? Maybe it means something else. You know, it just, I'm, I see what you mean. I'm, I'm turning I'm, things around. I might yeah. blow, I might blow back with you on that one, you know, because sometimes you have to, you know, come up with a term that works because there is something about, for me, there's a dependence upon someone's approval when I do certain things. So if that's with codependence is, I do have a oh, little bit oh. of that, that going on. And I really do get into, here's where it wanders into. And I don't know, again, is this a Scorpio trait? I rescue. I'm a real bad rescuer. I, I, I love a rescuer. <laughs> oh my God. Well, look at the business we're in. We're in the business of helping people. I'm in the business of helping and adding laughter yeah. to their lives and things like that. It is like, even, yeah. when, even when you talked about your help today, I'm going, I got some answers for her. I'm going to have to get her. I'm going to have to pull her aside at later. And so, because I've had all these things that have happened in my life where these are experiences that have had led to success in health and happiness and so forth, so forth. But these other people that are close to me, it's what's so sad. And I'm wondering, is it just a birth sign thing? Like I should just, move no. in a different direction with both no. of our family members. I mean, it's really upsetting to me. Sometimes it's conditioning from childhood. Yeah. Sometimes it goes way back and you just don't know. I'm like born optimistic. My yeah. sister isn't. She always looks at the dark side first. And, what and si I always look what, at the light side. What sign People are both of you? People don't even think we're in the same family. Yeah, I have the same thing with my oh, sister. Oh, I don't say what sign I am, but I'll tell you off the air. You don't? <laughs> well, I'm going to look you up on on uh, Wikipedia. I'll find out. Come on, my crack staff. Get to it. When's she born? We're going to figure that out. I'm going to do her chart right here. I have that. It's amazing. My sister and I we're don't We're going to have that long dinner. <laughs> my, 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 my sister won't speak to me. She's another one who doesn't speak to me and won't tell me why. This is many years, and I keep showing up going, hey, come on, let's get back to some happiness because we had all these fun experiences together and stuff like that. She's locked in to some idea of who she thinks I am. But I think a lot of it has to do with I don't buy into her reasonings, like her reasonings are lies and she doesn't like that. So therefore, oh, let's yeah. demonize him instead of like looking inside and going, yeah, you're right. And, you know, I, I went down this path. But my 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 question is, how much it is attributed to the birth sign? Like my sister is an Aries, but then I have three Leos that I'm close to that all do this same thing of really, really taking me down instead of like, hey, let's some, tell some truth together, be vulnerable with one another. There could be sensitivities in the birth chart. Some astrologers do psychological astrology. I do more personality and optimism and opportunity, I should say. I don't psychoanalyze anybody. Once in a while, I'll look back and say, what happened to you when you were 14? Something traumatic mm, yeah, happened exactly. in your life. Yeah. I actually told that to a Chinese man, and he said that showed up. He said I was walking to school, and I come from a very fine family, very wealthy family. And two guys pulled up in a van, put a hood over my head, threw me in the back, and demanded a million dollars from my father. 
Well, in China, when you do something like that, they don't even have a trial. They just throw the key away and, you know, you don't have a life after that if they catch you. And his father was resisting giving the million dollars. And they said, well, you have one phone call. They handed him the phone. He said, I don't want to call anyone. I want to talk to you. And he talked them off the ledge. He said, you have children. You have a wife. Why are you doing this? You're not you're not going to have a good life if you continue on on this. They finally did let him go. And his family was so freaked out. They moved out of Beijing and moved to Toronto in mm. Canada. His father was an ambassador and, um, you know, very distinguished family. I actually met them. I wanted to meet his mother and father, so he made it possible. And um, lovely, lovely family. But that showed up in the chart. You can, look, somebody could be a Gemini and talk too much and be um, not straightforward, like have two sides to them. But 95% of them are wonderful people looking for the truth. Usually they're in journalism or somehow involved with communication, podcast, broadcasting, publishing, something. Um, so my, my point is some of them go extreme. There's bad potatoes in every sign. Right. Um, it has, there has to be, obviously. Like P Pisces is a very religious and spiritual sign. Really? Ben Laden is supposed to be born March 10th. Mm -hmm. Took religion way too far. Yeah. You know, became well, a terrorist. I would like to take mm -hmm. our conversation far, but we are at a time limit and our time is up, uh -oh. even though we live in an infinite, infinite galaxy. We have our own limitations we have to live by sometimes. Not that I have a commercial to cut to. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so nice, so nice hanging with you, Susan. I can't wait to talk so to you, off, you. Of, off of here because I'm going to find out your birth sign. And I'm going to find out some other discoveries. Of <laughs> and I want to send you my my calendar. This is this year's, but I wow. just finished next year's. It's not back from the printer. I'll get it later this week. So I'll send you both. But they're, oh, and here's Scorpio, very, very sexy Scorpio. Uh, my artist did a great job. <laughs> oh, I love, I love being sexy. That's great. I'm also, by the way, <laughs> you and I have shared something else in common. Do you know what my kids call me and other people call me? Opto for optimistic. I'm very optimistic. And sometimes, Wonderful. sometimes I believe people are threatened by that. They don't like that you're filled with light and joy, and they try to take you down and oh. diminish your light and extinguish your light. Aww. Well, it happens all the time. And that's what these people that I'm talking about, they don't like that I come with truth and I'll even reflect back to them, hey, that wasn't a good idea to attack and all that kind of stuff. But they don't want to hear it because that's the season that they're in right now. And hopefully we pray and hope that they can find another energy source that they're going from. It's Anakin Skywalker like uh, in, in Star Wars. You know, they get possessed by the dark side and it's tough for them to come out. Listen, real pleasure hanging with you. Thank you for being part of Still Standing Up. That's where we're still standing here, Susan, even though you have a lot of cops that are surrounding you. It's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are still standing. Well, we're sitting right now, but we're, we're standing through life and getting through everything with resilience and passion and compassion and empathy and love. Bring divine love to people and really all the other stuff it kind of goes by the wayside when you immerse yourself in that love and yeah. that energy and that source, which I know you are. Real pleasure to hang, hang it with you today. So well, let's do thank it again. You. All right. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being here. Thank you all for mm -hmm. being here. Uh, subscribe. What do they do? They subscribe. They go to my Instagram. I'm official Craig Shoemaker. We'll follow one another and uh, go have a good time. I'm trying to assemble a group of people that just love life. You know what I mean? we got to love life some more, okay? Bring that to the, Definitely. To the world. Definitely. Yeah. All right. See you all later. Okay. Hey, it's Craig Shoemaker. I wanted to give you a special offer. I don't like saying it like that, but I will because it's actually called Special Offers on my website. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I've been in the coaching business for a little while. Now, we have something called Winning with Laughter. We have Winning with Humor. Now, we have Winning with Laughter. I'll teach you how to win in life with laughter. Now it's available in a special offer. You don't have to be part of the course. You can join now. You're already too late on the other one. Now you can have this. Go to special offers on the website, craigshoemaker.com, and you're going to learn how to win with laughter. And even you can be funnier. I can teach you.